Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to the Steel Donut. Today, with me, I'm Bob, and, and I'm Connor. Is, yeah, and and we're gonna be reading a story called Andrea's Story, in the To Save a Life section. I, I haven't seen that yeah, movie. Yeah, some movie. I have no fucking idea. Uh, do you want to give us the description? All right. Andrea Stevens wasn't always the perfect Christian girl. She used to be suicidal, like Johnny. Ugh, Johnny. Apparently, apparently Christians can't uh, can't be suicidal. Yeah, no. Even after she became a Christian, she wasn't perfect like they think. Who thinks Christians are necessarily perfect? Her story before, during, and after TSAL. Future Andrea X Jake. T for Dark Themes R and R. So they're basically gonna do the prequel and the story for To Save a Life. And after. Bef- her story yes. before, during, and after. Yes. Okay. Uh, why don't you give us the author's name as well, and then I'll get started. All right. Andrea's story. Disclaimer, I do not own To Save a Life or any of the characters. Thank you. We wouldn't have known otherwise. We thought you definitely owned this. A Narnia s- X is X home. A slash N. Sorry if it seems a little slow. I just wanted to give some background and some of Andrea's feelings before the story. So the story hasn't actually started yet? Not quite. Alright, chapter one. I didn't know when it had started. Between school and family, maybe it was inevitable. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. There There had to be something more than this. But I was deluded if I thought there was. What? Huh? Maybe death would be the closest I would ever get to more than this. If I finally got up the nerve to go through with killing myself... What is going on? I'd, it's pretty clear this author has never considered suicide. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Yeah. I had been cutting for a while. At, for as long as I could remember, I cutting was my norm. <laughs> I cutting was my norm. <laughs> I was a freshman at the local high school now, and I had been cutting since at least 8th grade. So you could only remember the last year. Yep. As long as I could remember. Everything. The last 12 months. Everything two years ago and beyond, she just couldn't remember. Maybe in her town, freshman is like years after 8th grade. Yeah. Probably even before that. What? Uh. Probably. Maybe she couldn't remember it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. She could have been. She could. She might Maybe, not have been. Maybe, yeah. I just didn't know when I had started needing it so much. When it became my drug to get rid of all the emotional pain whenever something bad would happen. That Ugh. sentence just goes on and on. Yeah. It helped get rid of the pain. It really did. Thank you, you told us. I hated my life. I hated living, and cutting was the only thing that got me through the day. Thank you, you tell us that was the norm. <sighs> we, we get it. I was at the point where even on a good day, <laughs> I had to cut myself at least once just to make sure I was still living. That I wasn't in a dreamland, or worse, hell. Whoa. What? You're, you're right, this person has never... Never... I... No, whatever. I blamed my parents, mostly. My siblings always got everything they asked for, and I barely even got glanced at. <laughs> what? Her, her parents, like, looked at her, you yeah, know, for a second glance. or so, and it's like, that's it for the hour, sweetie. Yep. Oh, all out of time. You're gonna have to, you know, make your payments on time if you want to get more than a glance. Yeah. My dad was always with some other woman, the reason for his absence until the wee hours of the morning. But, of course, in my junior high days, I hadn't known that. Some other woman? It sounds like he's contrasting that with being with the narrator. (laughs) Like, my dad could be with me or some other woman. (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. But my mom still stayed with him, even though whenever he was home, he would beat her senseless sometimes. Whenever he was home, sometimes. Sometimes. If he had had too much to drink, I never got beat by him, mainly because I stayed away. So if they can't... Obviously, they never glance at you if you're just staying away from them. Yeah. But, I mean, aren't you glad they didn't glance at you? 
Your parent, you wait. So this sounds like such a con convoluted situation. The father is the father is abusive, but he also just gives the kids whatever they want, except for one of the kids who he completely ignores. Yes. What an unusual situation. It sounds to me like this person just has a really skewed perspective of whatever. <clears throat> uh, where am I? Oh, I was so scared of him when he was drunk. Finally, my parents divorced in eighth grade. In their eighth grade? <laughs> <laughs> it was all my fault, or so I thought, because I was so worthless and couldn't do anything right. Whenever they did pay attention to me, that was all I heard about. How stupid I was. <laughs> okay, so that just sounds like emotional abuse. Okay. Mm. I hated bouncing back and forth between houses. Dad's on every other weekend. Mom's the rest of the time. E that's the other weekends. Okay. Even, even though it wasn't that often. Every other weekend is pretty often. But I always got the couch at my dad's. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I really don't know. At least dad would give me the couch, or I hated going there because dad made me get the couch. Right. I, I can't. It, it could be either. Maybe, then, they, maybe got the couch as some freak of speech. You know? Oh, something uh, like I always got get. the couch at my dad's. Dad you know? always gave me the couch. Yeah. He threw the book at me and gave me the couch. Then there was school. I was a social pariah. The freak. The weirdo without any friends. I always brought my razors to school. Uh... It was my little secret. No one ever caught me. Even if things were really bad in a certain class and I was scratching, causing pain but not breaking skin or making myself bleed, with one under the desk. Wow, that, that was a sentence. dull razor. That is a really long sentence. Uh, yes. I always brought all the way I to... See. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't like goth or anything. <laughs> Fuck yeah, those just guys. throw those people under the bus. I had my own sense of style that was more punk esque. Even than when any... she's just cutting herself and hating life, she makes sure to stop and clearly yeah. define her fashion. Right. So that we know she was cool. Yeah. I had my own sense of style that was more punk esque than anything. But I always had at least two colors in my hair, and I always wore long sleeves. Always. And that all alone made me a freak. Wearing long sleeves always? Yeah. That alone made her I a remember freak. when I was in high school and I saw this kid who was always yeah. wearing long sleeves. You remember that freak? Yeah, I know. What a weirdo. Even when it was like minus 20 degrees outside, you were expected to show up in a t-shirt if you were one of the cool kids. Yeah, and you know what? This kid just didn't want to be cool. No. <sighs> what a weirdo. What a freak. Yeah. If I wasn't being ignored, I was being laughed at. Usually, I was just ignored, though, but not today. Today, some idiot jock thought it would be funny to trip me, the girl whose name nobody knew, while I was walking to my empty table in the corner of the cafeteria. My tri like so the cutting and stuff that's that stuff is like oh man that that's that that could be uh, like a serious issue but no we're gonna talk about getting tripped. <laughs> that's what we want to go into detail about. Yeah. Oh man. Aver emotional abuse, physical abuse, those are, again, serious things we could go into detail about. But no, we're about to get a no. fucking story about getting tripped in the lunchroom. Oh, man. Oh, woe is me. Yeah. <sighs> my tray flew out of my hands and I fell right on top of it. My shirt was soiled. My blue, pink, and brown hair filled with food. Oh, man, if she'd gotten any worse, she'd have gone to school with four hair colors. Ugh, man. I stood up angrily. I didn't cry, even though I felt the tears coming to my eyes. I pushed them down. I would not lose my resolve, would not let them know that I had wanted to cry for just a second, that I felt so alone and worthless and I just wanted to die. It is high school. If you trip in the lunchroom, everyone's noticing. If you wear long sleeve shirts every day, <laughs> everyone's, everyone's noticing. noticing. Yeah. I never cried in front of these people. I hated these people, and I wanted... Wait, didn't we just go from past tense to present tense, like, like uh, earlier? Like, wasn't it like, but not today? Today, some idiot jock thought it would be funny? No, and she's writing this at 9 o'clock at night. Okay, okay. What the fuck? I don't know. Uh, okay, uh... I hated these people. I hated these people, and I wanted them to know it. I left the tray on the ground, turned around, and stalked out of the cafeteria. Stalked? Stalked what? All... 
all you got done is that now the janitor hates you. Pick yep. up your mess. Yeah. I want them to know I hate them by just walking away. Yeah. Headed straight to the bathroom. Nobody cared. Not my family, who had seen my arms sliced and bleeding right in front of their faces and were either too ignorant or just looking right through me to even care. That's new to us. Yeah. You, what, so, you're wearing long sleeves. Is that why? <laughs> I mean, that yeah. that wouldn't be the reason for people to think you're afraid yeah, of the, the cutting. Cool. Like, um, not these jerks at school, who used me as the butt of their jokes constantly, or pretended I wasn't there. Isn't that what your parents did? Uh, not these jerks at school, contrasting them with the family who... It just looks right through them. Yeah. Pretends I'm different. I had no friends. No family. Not really. Nobody. Climbed on top of the toilet seat and sort of crouched down. Period. <laughs> sort of. No subject needed. It was like a half squat. Yeah. I reached for my messenger bag on the ground in front of me and pulled the razor I had unscrewed from the inside of a pencil sharpener out of, of one of the sm so small side pouches. Jesus, I can't speak. Yeah. <clears throat> I pulled up my right sleeve, then pressed the razor against it. I wonder how this how this even remotely plays into the movie To Save a, to life. Save a life. I bet you this is like the opening scene. Oh. I have no idea what that movie's about. Yeah, I don't know. Since I was at school, I wasn't going to cut hard enough to draw blood, just enough to release the pain. What's the point of even living? I thought as I squinted against the pain I was causing myself. <laughs> no one would even notice I'm gone. If they did it, if they did, it would just be to wonder where their favorite torture subject went. I thought like this a lot. It was true though. It really was. No one at school knew my name. My dad had, was always wasted out of his mind. Oh, wasted off that Hennessy. Yeah. Mm. My mom was always doting on my brother and sister so much it was like I had never even I had never been born. Seriously, if your mom is doting on them, <laughs> doting mean, on them and doling on them. Wow, doling on them kids. Doling on the yeah, brought to you. Brought to I guess dole, she's. Please. I guess she's getting doled on. She's getting doled on, and they're getting doted on. Yeah. That would have been too much to ask. To never be born. It would have been amazing. What? It would have been amazing. So... I didn't have a change of clothes, so I didn't bother. I didn't even attempt to rinse out my hair. Uh, I would let them think what they did to me did not bother me a bit. Hmm. Okay. When I was done, I jumped off the toilet, picked up my bag, and walked out of the bathroom to go to the class I was late to. As luck would have it, today was also report card day. I used to be a straight-A student, but when everyone stopped caring, I stopped caring too. School was pointless anyway. When I walked into in the door late and, my, and slammed my bag on the ground, the teacher gave me an evil look, then walked over and handed me my report card. Straight C's and D's. Oh, nice. yeah! Man, I wish I had straight C's and D's. Oh, yeah. I really didn't care about my <laughs> grades, but I was dreading the night when I would lie awake for hours. Wait, doesn't straight normally mean, like, all of your grades are one thing, like straight A's, straight B's? Like, if I walk in and I'm like, oh, yeah, I got straight A's, B's, and C's. Yeah, you'd straight be like... A's through D's. <laughs> I got straight letter grades. <laughs> well, no number grades today. Well, yeah, no shapes. At least you didn't get any Fs, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. That well, was an that interesting... That was chapter one, that, yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting build-up. Now where's the rest? Yeah, there's no other chapters. Uh, figures. Yep. Yep. Man. So I guess all of that took place dur like before, during, and after. Holy shit. To save a life must take place over the course of... Wow, that cover's horrible. Yeah. Dude, to save a life must take place over the course of, like, an hour. <laughs> like, the whole movie is just, like, real time. No, no, Andrea is probably some, like, 60-year-old Christian lady who was like, Back in high school, I questioned my faith, but then I found God. Wow. And it's gonna be, like, another 49 parts before they get to the movie. Jesus. I don't know. Literally. Yeah. Any reviews? Uh, three. 
Just people. Just people. Are you gonna rig me? You should. You shouldn't. To save uh, Andre Astori. Yeah, yeah, you mixed up the movie and... <laughs> and Just to, to the save the generic ass yeah. title of the story. Well, that was boring. Yep. Peace out. Thanks.